Once again, this week's topic is called Desires, Lust, and Jezebel. I have two um, wonderful ministers, brethren, and elders seated with me here today. And they will share their mind, they will share the scriptures with us concerning this topic. Um, first of all, I would like them to simply introduce themselves, maybe tell us how they have been, how they have been faring. So, Brother Jeff, um, usually we see you preaching, usually we see you um, preaching the word, but today we are uh, with you here at the table talk, so maybe you can just simply tell us how you have been. Um, we thank the Most High for, for life and uh, a new Sabbath. I'm happy to be here. Um, all things work together for good, so irrespective of how I'm feeling and how my week has been, Elohim is good, uh, and we give glory unto Elohim for life. Um, I'm happy to be here. I like the topic. It is good uh, to be around um, our brothers and sisters, and I feel privileged to be at the other side uh, today of the water also to receive something so um yeah man gun salute for the Messi, soldiers in the ghetto <laughs> brother apc how are you doing it's all good all praise to the most high all praise to the most high um before we um get into the the actual topic i usually like to give a small um definition of the terms that we'll be using um desires i think is um uh, quite obvious i won't spend much time on that but lust uh, many people have a different perspective or different uh, point of view when it comes to lust so i'll ask this one to brother jeff can you give us a, a, a definition of lust um when i was coming this way i was uh, thinking about the topic um, and i would say that lust to me is the root of all evil uh, it is that which propels and and starts and harbors uh, sin within us. So it's a uh, desire that is linked to sin. Uh, it's a consuming nature which does not stop, uh, which does not have an end, and is never satisfied. So I would say that lust is a negative uh, desire, a desire to have something that is not necessarily beneficial to your soul. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I can say. That's what pops to mind, man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and many times you see people that really lust after something. They are, they are willing or able to do something that they would never do in order to obtain that thing that they are lusting after. So, um, okay, then I would like to... I think you already gave a, a, a small um, summary of what I would like to ask, but I'll ask it anyway. So, um, the difference between desire and, and, and lust... Um, when can you or when is a person simply desiring something and when is a person like consumed by, by lust can you give a, maybe an example to, to clear it out <laughs> All right. should I go All right. you can go look desire is like everybody got a desire for certain things but lust is like a another stage of desire when you desire something and it becomes on a certain level that goes on a negative way that then it becomes lust and lust leads to sin and sin leads to death so the the desiring some something is not bad but mm -hmm. when you go over the limit it's like drinking they say drink with a limit mm -hmm. I, for i give an example when you pass the limit you off Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like with everything. When you cross that line, you will reach a whole different stage. And there is what I see where the difference is. But um, like, like in your past experiences, do you have an example or just do you have uh, an experience where you caught yourself um, lusting after something? Um, <laughs> yeah, can you, give, it a, can yeah. you give us an example of that? There are way too much examples, man. Just one, just one, Papa. Uh, women, man. Women? Women, oh, yes, man. We all, uh, I had a past that desires went to the sky, man. You, you know, it turns to lust all oh, over, Philly, man. Philly. Philly, I come from a rock and roll lifestyle, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis. <laughs> yeah, but all praise to the most high. We are now here, but but when it comes to when it comes to you, you named or you mentioned women, so mm -hmm. when 
are you simply desiring um, a woman? Or let, let me let me ask it like this: When you desire a woman, is that wrong? Is that sinful? When you desire a woman, a woman? No, it is. In Elohim made it like this: that we all, as men, have this desire to have a woman. For Adam was feeling alone, mm -hmm. and he was desiring to have somebody that he can share his burden with, and that's a normal stuff. Mm -hmm. But Once you dis disobey what is being written, then you know what the consequences. Then you go off. But des desiring a woman is not bad. Um, so desiring a woman is not bad, but it, but but at what point um, do you think that it really flips over to lust? Because because the, it's it's kind of a gray area. Some people would say that I desire a woman, but in the same time like they continually think about the woman in some type of way uh, have you then already crossed that limit this one will then be to brother jeff um, like when do you flip over from desire to to lust when you were asking that question what i was thinking about is that do you desire a woman or do you desire marriage mm -hmm. there are two different things mm -hmm. you see if you desire a woman mostly it's for lust You want to be mm -hmm. a woman, but if you desire marriage, you understand the purpose for which you need a woman, and then it becomes a desire to find the right woman. So I also think that it's important that um, to make a distinguish a disti a d distinction between desire and lust, we should understand why we want something. At times, if there's no real why, mm -hmm. it's lust. If there's a real justification mm -hmm. or a reasoning behind it, then it's a desire. The psalmist says that one thing have I desired and mm -hmm. one thing shall I look for. It was righteousness. It was to be in his temple. So there's a reason <laughs> for him to desire that. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to lust, it's just that, why do you want it? Yeah, I just want it. <laughs> I want a girlfriend. But why do you want a girlfriend? Everybody mm. has one. I'm hot. Yeah. You see, I'm hot. I'm, I'm warm. Just like we were having the discussion before this, uh, mm. this session. So mm -hmm. I think that Uh, desire is something that has a, a right purpose and lust is just it's just there and it does it eats you it eats you up that's what i can say yeah mm, so that's why I, i think that they don't often put you on table talk before you know you'll be <laughs> preaching you'll be pre cry <laughs> loud spare not <laughs> um but okay but i like when you when you look at certain um statements especially in this society and You see that some people then say that when it comes to provoked lust, that that is not a sin. And what I mean by that is sometimes you have this type of people that say that, okay, because a woman, for example, has dressed herself up in a certain way and that triggers a certain emotion or thought process, that is not a sin. Mm. But is that is that right? Because maybe that man or that woman... Um, did not even go out with a thought like I want to lust or I need something but the fact that she sees or he sees something triggers something within that person is that also lust and is that also sin it's like an open question um, you know the Bible says that sin will come but woe true who sin comes so um, we are in a world and an environment that wherever we go we'll see shaking booties and eh, shaking and tight uh, mm -hmm. jeans and men in, in singlets and whatnot. Summer is coming. Exactly. You know, we are all working out, trying to prepare our body, <laughs> not for the ladies, but for the kingdom. Um, no, but um, I think it's, it's important to know, you know, when you don't have the seed of lust, it cannot be triggered. Um, <laughs> so, so that's something we need to think about. And um, yeah, as I said before, That's why the Bible says that we have all sinned and fallen short. We all see it. We all mm -hmm. see it happening. But the question mm -hmm. is that what do you do when you see it happening? You know, I myself, I can testify that when I see it, I just ask Elohim, you know, take away every vain imagination from me. And mm -hmm. I just continue. But other brothers will be like, nah, man, I want to see the circumference of it. Mm -hmm. I want to see I want the to depth. Measure it. I want to see it in 3D. <laughs> 3D vision. Um, so yeah, that's what I can say about it. it. It's all around us, but we really should have our mind on Elohim. And when we are triggered to it, it's what you do with that trigger. Because you cannot control the trigger, but you can control what you do with the trigger. But um, you said like, if you don't have the seed of lust, it can't be triggered. 
then I immediately, I immediately then thought about men like David, men like Samson. Mm-hmm. Does it mean that they had um, the seed of lust? They had feelings. They had emotions. And But, that is where things like that can be triggered. And that's why also in a later stage, he said that I've made a covenant with my eyes. Mm-hmm. He renewed himself mm-hmm. and he prayed. That's why we all pray prayers that Elohim help us to take away the seed of lust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see, so that's why I'm saying that they all had their weaknesses. And that's why it was written uh, for us as a learning so that we may also use certain prayers to overcome it. So I think that it's a thing that we should do continually. And because of our fallen nature, mm-hmm. it seems like it's part of everyone. That feely, feely it is, kind of thing. It is part of everyone. That's mm. why we need to come to a point where we channel it. When I say that you don't have the seed, what I'm talking about is that you channel it. Mm-hmm. Because some would say that it's that same feeling that you have for your wife in the context of marriage. But we don't longer call it lust. Mm-hmm. So it also depends on where you place it and how you channel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, the topic then says desires, lust and Jezebel. But brother APC, can you explain to me um the link like between lust and jezebel w- what 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 does that have to do with each other oh. <clears throat> jezebel mm, how can i break how can i say it and uh, lust and jezebel now when you <clears throat> reach that point that you are being driven by by an uh, lust Mm-hmm. Is that spirit, Jezebel, that is, let, me, let me say is having a control over you. Mm-hmm. Like when once you walk in the way of Elohim, it is the Ruach HaKodesh that keeps you on. And the, the Ruach HaKodesh yes. is the same as the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, once you come on a point that you are desiring for lust, all those stuff, then there is a certain spirit that just controls you, that just leads you. But but when it you said that when you um, are led by lust, then it is a type of spirit Jezebel that mm. controls the individual. Mm. But um, when 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 you see Jezebel being mentioned in the churches in the assemblies, you see that it's always targeted towards women. But what about if men go astray lusting? Is that also the same type of spirit that is controlling them? Yeah, sure, but it's just because we always have the image of the Jezebel during the time of Elijah. Mm-hmm. And uh, also Je- Jezebel according to the book of Revelation. But mm-hmm. if you look, the same Jezebel was also taking con- control over, if I do not forget, was Ahab, yeah, her yeah. husband, and the mighty man who came to slaughter her. You you uh, you will see it is a spirit. Uh, spirit can take control over every empty vessel. So, mm-hmm. but be, because we live in a generation that we don't want to look outside of the box, we just have a certain box that was created, and we don't look fur- further. And we always point to the women, but we never mention the man that the man, has become mm-hmm. so feminine they have become so soft they cannot even take care of the truth mm-hmm. they cannot even take care of their own women at at home so uh, no, because jezebel always takes control over the man let me say it like that mm-hmm. so if it, it if it is in a woman it takes con- control over the man so if it is found in 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 a woman it then takes control over the man or the husband of that woman Yep. But what about what about single single ladies? Because many times when you go to the assemblies or, or, or churches, you see that also single ladies, especially single ladies, they are um, targeted saying that, okay, they have the Jezebel spirit because of this and because of that. But so does the Jezebel spirit also dominate um, um, single people? <laughs> yeah, it, it goes like this. It always goes uh, against the principle of the most high land. Mm-hmm. Man is the head of the woman. Mm-hmm. And the Messiah is the head of the man. Now, once a spirit enters in, into a single woman, it, 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 the, uh, the whole goal is to make sure that man falls. Because the single woman does not dress up nice for just going outside for just for fun. Mm-hmm. There is an... Uh, And the do what's it, um, a goal a goal for mm-hmm. a some man gonna look to slay how they some say man gonna break times. next 
And some women also gonna look. Some are gonna be je jealous. Why is she look so nice? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it always goes against what the Most High has said. And so, but um, then this question I have for Brother Jeff. Um, so this this spirit then Jezebel that that can control, dominate men, women. How is it like then triggered? How how does it how does it even start? Where, where how does it come to a point where a woman or a man is controlled by Jezebel? Um, the scripture says that we shouldn't be ignorant of uh, the devices of Nahash or mm -hmm. the devices of Satan. So I think that there are many ways that Satan gets to us. Mm. Um, and one of them is lust. And when lust has full uh, dominion over a person, one of the spirits that can k take control of such a person um, is the spirit of Jezebel. Now, mm. when you look at the spirit of Jezebel, it can be divided into two. You have one that pertains to false doctrine, and then you have the other one that mm. pertains to sexual looseness. And I think that's the first one um, that we are talking about. Um, so to come back to your question, I think that when a person comes to a stage that you indulge yourself so much in that area of lust, that the enemy can use you as a tool in his hands. So you no longer have a conscience. It's like your conscience has been weakened. And everything that pertains to sex, everything that pertains to uh, seductiveness, if that's a word, and um, hmm. promis 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 promiscuousness, promiscuity, um, <laughs> that, that, that's no longer foreign to you. It's like mm -hmm. it's part of you. So mm -hmm. that's, I would say that um, it happens, for example, when you use ladies as an example, when you start dressing in a certain way, it's like, oh, I just want to feel, I want to have confidence. And then you start wearing it more often and more often and more often. And now it's like your conscience has been seared, had been seared with a hot iron. So it's like you can wear mini skirt to church. And if mm -hmm. somebody asks you like, hey, sister, I don't think that this is appropriate. You get mad. Mm -hmm. So all that you think about is yourself. So I think that we open up ourselves uh, to such spirits by reason of these things. Uh, one of them is dressing. Another thing is uh, the things that we watch, the mm -hmm. things that we listen to. Mm -hmm. uh, Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, this, also, is that also a part of it? Very much so. Uh, you see people bonking, see people having sex, mm -hmm. same-sex marriages, uh, you name it. We are storing it in our brain, and uh, the spirit is allowing it to work in our body. So I think uh, these are the ways uh, that it can get to us, yeah. But, uh, okay, I think we spoke more about like what I can summarize out of your answer is that um, it comes through uh, uh, certain behaviors and certain things we watch mm -hmm. but what about the man how does it come to a point where that spirit is allowed to dominate a man or what can a man do that allows that spirit to dominate him mm -hmm. I think the brother gave a wonderful example about uh, how uh, Jezebel herself, I think, in the Book of Kings, mm -hmm. uh, did not only impact herself negatively, but the men around her. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, another way, so that's one way, uh, whereby we men, uh, we love Jezebel women, and mm -hmm. uh, we sleep with them, and we do what not with them. Um, and then, yeah, unfortunately, you become one. The Bible says that if they have like thousand spirits, uh, they will <laughs> deposit that thousand spirits also in you. Mm -hmm. And I think another one is, as I mentioned before, is that looseness of men, you know, wanting to sleep with every woman, mm -hmm. um, constantly breaking your neck. So what happens is that, hey, you looked at it, you liked it. Now, instead of you being triggered by it, you go searching for it. Mm -hmm. You go searching for it on the Internet. You go searching for it on the streets. Now you want to lay with them and et cetera, and et cetera. So it comes to a point where it totally consumes you. And then you're also uh, possibly being led by uh, the spirit of Jezebel. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, are there like um, character, like are there characteristics that are found in 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 every Jezebel woman? Like, is there a, like a kind of blueprint kind of thing when you when you can pinpoint like this is a Jezebel woman? Does she always like speak loudly or like? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, they certain... crave. I would say one is they crave for attention. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very. Um, dominant they want dominant to, yeah they want to take everything so if you're in a relationship with them it's like you become a small boy she wants to know your every move and small boy 
and 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 they don't they don't think about gratitude or they don't think about uh reference to others all that they think about is themselves um so when they dress in a certain way as i said before and you try to address them mm -hmm. it's like who are you to uh to to to, to address me i'm looking mm -hmm. wonderful so they don't really take i say i could say that those are one of the some of the signs that come up when i think about uh, a woman with uh with a jezebel spirit um yeah and at times it's not even intentionally yeah? we're mm -hmm. we not bashing them mm. at times you open up yourself to such spirits and they come and have dominion over you it's not as if people go around and oh i want to be a jezebel and they become a jezebel mm -hmm. it over false it it just happens um unfortunately yeah but i would then ask like brother apc what would then be like um not necessarily the solution or maybe the solution how can a person become conscious of the fact that she might be influenced by a jezebel or is that even a possibility that a person can just <clears throat> become conscious of the fact that hey maybe this spirit is influencing me to do certain things if you can go out without makeup i think you also have a jezebel <laughs> yep. i'm just thinking about it <laughs> If you can't go out without yeah, makeup, yep. just Wonderful. thinking about it. <laughs> how? How? I don't understand that one. Just it just it just popped up. I don't know why I have to say no, that. No, no, no. I don't understand that one. But I think so. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe a poker can explain. Uh, when it comes to makeup, the Jezebel, the Jezebel itself, according to the New Old Testament, mm -hmm. she was always wearing a makeup. Even on the day that they came to kill her, mm -hmm. what did she do? She went first put the makeup on and then came like for what are you coming to do so hey <laughs> if you don't love yourself you always need some some cover to hide yourself mm. man. <laughs> no, no, man wait 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 this one was was i think too heavy because there are <laughs> i think there are so ah, many sisters <laughs> i think there are so many sisters that that really really love the most high mm -hmm. and they they think that they are doing their best yeah. and they have never thought of it as um like makeup as a burden if you understand what i mean mm -hmm. for them it's just normal like i wake up this is my <laughs> like my regular routine and then i go out mm -hmm. but so if a person can't go out without makeup why does that mean that that person has a jezebel now when once name when you came out of your mother's belly did you came out with make makeup when elohim put you in this world did he put you with some and uh maybelline some uh, but, but but they want to what? beautify themselves they want to beautify don't? but you must ask yourself one thing if you cannot go outside the way elohim made you mm -hmm. How can you say you are walking in a righteous way? You cannot even love yourself. When you look at the mirror, you say the way Elohim made me. Nah, that is not. You see some points on your, on your head, you say, nah. And Jezebel's spirit goes always against the truth. Always against what Elohim has said. But maybe that has more to do with self-confidence and maybe it has nothing to do with Jezebel. Now, also one of the other things that um, Jezebel is also known for is attention. Yeah. And whether you like it or not, uh, if you are a person that craves attention mm -hmm. um, and you kick off attention, you might also have a problem in that area. The reason, and a lot of sisters uh, consciously or subconsciously, um, they crave for attention. Yeah. It's like when they dress in their eyes wonderfully and they go out and they don't get compliments they don't get the st mm -hmm. hey sister how are you doing mm -hmm. to them it's like oh yeah, something is wrong mm -hmm. but it was not women were not necessarily created in that manner mm -hmm. you were created to cover yourself and mm -hmm. a man should find your character mm -hmm. interesting so that's why we're saying that some of these things for example as uh, makeup can become an idol mm -hmm. an idol mm -hmm. is everything or most things that you can't do without mm -hmm. now if makeup comes to a point that you can't do without it it has become an idol and that's why i'm saying that if it comes to a point that it's an idol for you mm -hmm. then that means that you're having problems spiritually it's like i can't step out because i feel naked mm -hmm. you feel naked because you don't have makeup but when you are wearing a mini skirt mm -hmm. 
you, you don't, don't feel, feel naked. naked. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem lies. <laughs> I, I do agree with that part because because women would then say that, okay, they feel naked or uncomfortable because they do not have on uh, uh, makeup or they did, they did not put on makeup. But, for example, I went to an assembly, I think, a few months ago, if I remember, and then I saw this, this, this woman that, that, went to, that went to the front, and to be honest, the type of dressing that she was wearing, the type of dressing that she was wearing, I was kind of looking around like, is nobody noticing that I can see almost everything yeah, about um, the ship. that woman. The I ship. can see the shape. The Coca-Cola <laughs> bottle. I can see everything. And she really... And, the, and I, she I, has shape. <laughs> hey! The brother saw the shape. No, no. And, and, and she has shape. And she was not skinny. And she has shape. She had shape. I'm, I'm not even lying. But I was and looking around like... Ship. The pastor is acting like everything is yeah. okay and stuff like that. So he will call you and tell you that you are the one that needs deliverance. <laughs> yeah, my brother, come for deliverance. So, so I, uh, so a sister, um, Lorenza says that uh, about the makeup yeah. part that that's not true. So, but Lorenza, if you have an opinion, mm. we truly uh, um, mm. motivate you and stimulate you to share your opinion. But can you tell us why, like, you disagree? Why do you think that's not true? No. Uh, the funny thing with such questions is, and I've, I've heard it before, that people mm -hmm. disagree and agree. But I think I've said it here on the radio before that um, if makeup was so good, mm -hmm. um, why don't we give it to children? Why don't we make up a child when he's going to primary school? Mm -hmm. Your son, your daughter, make him, make him up. Modern parents, be, what, be careful. And push him to KG1 or mm. primary one. Mm. Um, the parent or the mother will tell her daughter that wait, it is not for children. Yep. Wait, it is not good. You see, so he's telling the child, don't be concerned about how you look. Mm -hmm. But when they grow, then mm -hmm. all of a sudden they should care about what they look. It's something, it's debatable and maybe one day we'll discuss it on the radio. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it's, it's important that we don't only look at our perceived reason of doing it but mm. the underlying motives at times you need to move away from what you think mm. and look at it most people say oh that's not true but they don't do any research mm -hmm. but researching how how like the like the origin or researching why it was first used or produced or when it was produced why it was produced when did they use it in the bible which type of people used it in the bible why did they use it in the bible mm -hmm. and then come to the the health implications yep health implications mm -hmm. you see so all these things yeah man. and and even the effect that it has on 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 certain relationships and even your pillow your pillow yep. sleep on it it will be turned black man <laughs> i i, I was i was speaking to to this this lady uh at at work and we were talking about makeup and then i asked her this question I, I was like like for example if a man goes out um and after this we'll get into the man because i also have a question about man but coming back to this topic i said for example like if you have a relationship a man goes out with a woman mm -hmm. and the woman always makes up herself so mm -hmm. the man has never seen the true face of that woman mm -hmm. and then after months maybe years of dating mm -hmm. they finally get to marry or something like that and after marriage you see that at home the woman has never puts on makeup mm -hmm. so then she has the natural face which the man did not see when they were dating mm -hmm. but only when they go outside she seems to beautify herself mm -hmm. So that, that did not make sense to me. Mm. Should you then beautify yourself in the presence of your man or only when you go outside where other people are viewing you? Mm. That was just something I was thinking it's about. It's vain. Just think about mm. it. The scripture even says that um, you will beautify yourself, but it's all in vain. Your lovers will do mm -hmm. what? They will despise you. It is in vain. And even look at what they call it. Make up. Make up. Who taught you that? Make up. <laughs> huh? I'm making it up. You made up the story. You made up your face. I'm making it I'm up. I'm making it up. <laughs> so um, the sister um, then says that uh, she also wears makeup, but mm -hmm. that does not mean that she has um, the spirit of Jezebel because, like, like th this this was what I said. Because That's not what I said. No, no, way. this okay. is what I said. Okay. Like, uh, many women go to, to go to the assembly, the church, and they are not conscious or they do not have that thought mm -hmm. for them is just like a regular thing mm -hmm. and she says that okay these type of statement can it it can scare you a bit mm -hmm. but what would then be um the thing that you have to say to such women like that is i think most part of the church is 
exactly this way. They were makeup, but they never thought about anything like Jezebel. Mm. So how would you advise them to like um, uh, take in this 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 statement? And how would you advise them to move forward? Uh, I would say to my sister, yeah, start start to do some research. Where does it came from? How 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 the brothers said. Start to do some re- research. Where does it came from? When it came to existence, what happened? What can I do to change it? Mm-hmm. All kinds of stuff. We have now social media, man. We have Wikipedia. We have all kinds of source that you can go in like 10 minutes. You will have your answer. Mm-hmm. It's just, are you willing? There's a, there's a whole thing. Are you willing to dig a little, a little bit further? To see if I, hey, what is this makeup really about? Uh, stuff that I put on my face, but because on a couple months ago I was talking to a makeup artist, mm-hmm. and she said, uh, she uh, she said to me like, the job that we do, we do not know that we are killing ourselves. The makeup artist. Yeah, said that. she said to me, many young girls they do not know that when we reach a certain age, we gonna hate our parents. Why? Or all face or body is going down. Every time we put the stuff on our face, we mm-hmm. take a little bit from our own. Every time we wash it away, we take a little bit from our own. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking like, man, she is right. Because if you do research, you will see the stuff, the chemical stuff, mm-hmm. what they put in that stuff that you will put on your face. Just do a research at mm-hmm. times i wonder even how some women rate men mm-hmm. because men who were born and from the day that we were born to the day that we die mm-hmm. no makeup touches our face i'm black i'm proud <laughs> and they will say that i like this brother he's beautiful he's handsome he's pretty and whatnot mm-hmm. in general about men you see so that on that alone should already trigger something like man can do without and the funny thing is most of them they will put it on and then they will get compliments hey you're looking good oh you're looking so wonderful Mm -hmm. but it's not truly you and then when you walk in your own way in your natural way Mm -hmm. there are less compliments to no compliments so then ask Mm -hmm. yourself the question the compliments that you are getting is that because of you or what Mm -hmm. you're portraying to be so to come back to your question we are not here to judge them yeah. we are just here to uh bring about an announcement and to to awaken them in that area also mm. for them to think about these things yeah. because it's like nobody preaches about it yep. nobody okay. preaches about it mm-hmm. yeah but uh, she then uh, the sister then uh, continues to say that what about some some women then use it um yeah literally to make up but what if if you have certain things on your face you can think about pimples yeah. or maybe some woman Brother, that is <laughs> the what ifs the what ifs no <laughs> no but no, no but i'm, I'm not i'm not bashing it no, no i will mm-hmm. get to that but the what ifs no the problem with the what ifs is always that first we yeah. have an argument there's always a what and if. then the what if what if what if mm-hmm. perfectly fine the funny thing is the reason why a lot of people have these pimples, these scars and whatnot is because, is because of makeup. Mm-hmm. As you're sitting here, what scar do you have on your face? <laughs> you're like a baby. <laughs> huh? Smooth uh, boy, no pimples. <laughs> but you eat fat. I eat fat. <laughs> you see? So, so that, 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 that's where we need to come to. That's what we need to think about. As in, what do I put into my body? What am mm-hmm. I doing with my body? And then rather than, oh, covering up, like... If I have a pimple and I have to preach, I will preach plus my yeah. pimple. Plus should, your pimple. Should I cover it up like, <laughs> ah, I need to put little foundation mac. Mm. You see, so the what ifs, it is good when we encourage them to give the what ifs. But before you go into the what if, try to process the information. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I think we touched on the wo- woman a lot, but I want to also <laughs> touch on the men. Because to go back to one of your first statement was that if you cannot do without or women that cannot go out without makeup uh, might have been influenced by Jezebel. But but what about men, for example, that cannot go out without designer clothes? What about men that cannot go out without an expensive watch or an expensive coat? Uh, or apart from the clothing, that cannot just go out without certain things that they have to put on. By what kind of spirit might they be influenced? Same stuff. 
same stuff. Mm-hmm. Same stuff. So it does not only go for women, but men just have the same issue, but maybe on other territories or other that's aspects. The, that's the lust aspect. You know, mm-hmm. lust can, um, can touch a lot of areas of a one's mm-hmm. life. You know, guys also have problems with lust a lot. Mm-hmm. When it comes to sexual lust, when it comes to uh, lust of being liked by people, Mm -hmm. uh, lust of fighting, lust of being self-centered, you you name it. You see, so when a guy is into that, oh, I need to wear Gucci, Armani, Prada Mm -hmm. before Mm -hmm. I step out, or when you guys that 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 prey on other people that mm-hmm. that always want to have dominion and always play a boss mm-hmm. in their relationships and stuff like that very dominant type of men some mm-hmm. of them also have uh, the spirit of Jezebel especially when you are dominant but you are not holy yep so you are dominant hey you need to do this and where were you and you didn't call me blah blah, blah. meanwhile you are dating other girls mm-hmm. meanwhile you have problems with masturbation so i think that lust comprises of so many things and to the man they also need to be bashed when it comes yep. to lust yep. you you masturbate in the morning yep. you go to school you go to the toilet <laughs> you masturbate there you get home you masturbate and then you're there bashing women with fake hair mm-hmm. you see yeah, i'm not yeah, here yeah. to bash ladies yeah. only i bash the man even yeah. more because it's the men that i expect something of yep. if the men raise up the standard then what would the woman do? They will have to because otherwise they won't get married. That that is that is one of the points I think about uh, or that I have thought about when it comes mm. to this topic. Mostly women then, then can say that okay, I wear makeup because I like it. Mm. But um, you see that mostly they wear simply wear makeup because men like it. Um, if if men uh, would like again the what if but. If men uh, would not like um, that that certain behavior, you see that women would adapt their ways. Most women would adapt their ways. So I think the blame also lies at 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 men because you have certain men. If their woman does not wear makeup, does not wear a weave, mm-hmm. they say like I cannot like this is unacceptable. You're not presentable. You are not presentable. You're not so For example, I know I know a man. <laughs> yeah. I know of a man. Mm. Um, uh, his daughter heard of, of similar teaching that we teach her about um, mm-hmm. why you should and not forcing, but why you shouldn't wear so, uh, some type of things. And he he said, and if my daughter mm. decides to stop wearing makeup, I, I'll get mad. Yeah, I'll, I'll like begin to kick certain people yeah. out of out out of their houses yeah. and stuff like that. So you have uh, that type of man. So what should then a woman do when it when she is with such a father or such a husband? Mm. I think it, it shows how fallen we are in our nature, in yeah. our thinking, um, that we should devote a show, mm-hmm. uh, we should vote, devote minutes and time uh, speaking and trying to um, 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 support somebody that wants to be natural. Mm. I think that being natural is the closest you can be to yourself. Um, and we are searching for ourselves spiritually. And one of the ways that we can do that is also to find ourselves physically. Um, so there are a lot of men that have been brainwashed, um, Mm -hmm. into believing the status quo that is in the air. Um, and it all comes from the white, um, what is it called? Prejudiced and whatnot, Mm -hmm. wanting to be like our suppressor. Mm -hmm. Um, that is where it comes from. You know, the fake hair, the, 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 uh, the bleaching of skin and all Mm -hmm. these things. Um, so I think that if you are a lady, because that was your question, um, you hear the word, you know, at the end of the day, it's your salvation. Mm-hmm. A man cannot force you to put on makeup. If your man is forcing you to put on makeup, what he's actually saying is that he's not so into you. I'm not saying that you should divorce him, but if it's your boyfriend, mm-hmm. lose that nigga. <laughs> straight away, straight up. I'm not going to lie because at the end of the day, that's what you are. That's how you will wake up and that's how you will go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so try, let's try and find ourselves. You know, there's beauty in it. And at the end of the day, when we are talking about love and stuff, it's all about character. It's mm-hmm. not about beauty. That's why the Bible, time without number, it would say that beauty is vain. Beauty is vain. Mm-hmm. Beauty is vain. But we read these things, beauty is vain, and we go and put stuff on it. So, yeah, man. I don't <laughs> want to derail from the topic, but uh, that's what I can say. Yeah. Um, um, maybe in the in the last few, like, eight minutes, we can talk solutions. Because um, I have been, I had been uh, dealing with lust. All the examples that you mentioned yeah. about just being totally consumed uh, mm-hmm. 
about women lust i've gone through it mm. i'm pretty sure uh, a lot of men have gone through it we but have all gone through we've it we've all gone through it but yeah. what were the steps that you took or what were the things that maybe came your way in order for you to like break loose of that that cycle that lustful that lustful kind of thing brother apc the the truth and that led to confession to confess it mm -hmm. first it was the truth to accept the truth it was hard eh? serious it was very hard to accept mm -hmm. the tr truth and then to confess it because confess. once you expose it you will it's like the word say that light, lightning and darkness cannot be on the same place when lightning mm -hmm. comes darkness got to move mm -hmm. but you must be will, willing to let the light shine in you and that's some sometimes you have to take a whole lot of time to reflex and look at yourself and uh, yeah that's and uh that is how i did it just but but how do you deal with the fact that you said you said it's hard so yeah. i can imagine that like like you rose up and you fell because i certainly yeah. know that i rose up and i fell yeah. um to the same kind of lustful desires and feelings but but do you think do you think that there is one 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 thing that you did that really uh, uh cause you to break through do you think that there is one thing that you did that really made uh, a significant impact or a change in in how you deal with how you dealt with with lust accepting the truth man accepting, accepting the, the truth, truth the word of elohim from genesis to revelation without compromise just so when it comes to truth. accepting the truth do you mean then accepting um um the many preachings about not to like lust not to watch uh, especially pornography not to masturbate to accepting those kind of messages and just saying that okay this is true i was wrong so mm -hmm. confession was what really made a difference yes. for you there is a reason why the messiah said that the truths are set you free mm -hmm. but we always take yeah i just took the truth and it changed now you have to it takes steps. Mm -hmm. Certain things you got to cut off. Certain people you got to cut them off. And man, mm -hmm. you must ask yourself for how long have you been doing that? Mm -hmm. And it cannot be like in one moment you quit it and everything bomb. Mm -hmm. You have been putting that seed inside of you. It has become all already a tree mm -hmm. that brought more fruits. More fruits. Mm -hmm. So that uh, and that is why the word say that the axe is on the roots. Mm -hmm. So you have to go deep, dig down in the roots and uh, start to cut some roots, man. Start to cut some people, some things, some behaviors. People. Mm -hmm. Uh, certain things you cannot watch because you know it will trigger certain things it mm -hmm. will make certain uh, pandora box to open you understand <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and and i actually have the same question to you brother jeff i think you have may have um similar or different experiences as brother apc maybe uh, myself but what was that thing that really caused a difference that made a change in your life in how you dealt with uh, lust and all those type of emotions um for me personally it was two things the first one was be honest to yourself you see we sing songs father i give you my heart mm. father use me for your glory break me mold me i want to be used bring me into the nations make me a prophetess make me a prophet we pray all these things in church we cry and all mm -hmm. But at times, move from those statements and think about what you're saying. The implications of what you're saying and the practicalities of what you're saying. Because we say it so easily, but the implementation thereof becomes difficult. Mm -hmm. Father, I give you my all, yet I don't want to give you my makeup. I give you my all, mm -hmm. yet I don't want to stop fornicating. I give you my all, yet I don't want to stop masturbation. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying that the first thing is to be honest to yourself that mm -hmm. I've been praying, been asking Elohim to help me, but I do I really want to be helped? Mm -hmm. Because the reason why a lot of us are not being helped by Elohim is because we don't want to be helped. Mm -hmm. We are claiming for him to break us. We are claiming for him mm -hmm. to renew us, but we don't want to be renewed. Yeah. So I think that that's the first thing. Just sit and reflect on your life 
And the second thing, the Bible says that guard your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to guard our heart. The people that we talk to, the things that we watch, the TV pro. You're a spiritual pro person. You watch Power. Then you watch Netflix. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then you watch the... I hardly hear spiritual people say that I watch Discovery Channel. They watch <laughs> E. E. What's the... Yeah, E. Entertainment. <laughs> Keeping up with the Kardashians. When he's done Bradzilla. Then <laughs> the dress, the white dress. Mm -hmm. So what we are filling our mind is is lust. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's the two things that help me. And uh, we have all been there and we are all still struggling. Mm -hmm. But one thing, just be true. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. when you say I give you my heart, you're saying that I give you my heart. You're not saying I give you my pastor's heart or my leader's heart. Mm -hmm. So your leader may be doing something, but that doesn't mean that you should also do it. Mm -hmm. Search Elohim for yourself. That he might work on you. That's what I can say. Um, unfortunately, we have come to an end of this this table talk. But one thing, uh, one last thing I have to say is that um, many people. Uh, it's not. It's not really about where you find yourself at the moment that you hear a message. But it's more about how you uh, how you continue. What do you do? Uh, do you really go on research and be true to yourself, or do you simply uh, ignore it without actual arguments because those are the worst type of discussions people that argue but they do not have any arguments it's more about what i feel no i don't think that so i think we should really um get into the scriptures and be honest about it reach out if you need help uh, so once again it's not really about where you are but where are uh, you heading uh, so once again i thank you to brethren for for joining me at this table talk I really have been learning a lot, and I think the listeners also. Jump.